You asked, I answer. Oh, interesting coffee today. Use some uh, coconut milk in it. I, I actually had some uh, while I was in China for the first time. A latte that had coconut milk instead of regular dairy milk. And I was quite surprised. It's actually pretty good. So today I was at the store and I'm looking at the milk, milk section. And, uh, well, there's some coconut milk. So I got it. And, wow, it uh, tastes exactly like the coffee with coconut milk that I had in China. I guess that probably isn't much of a surprise. Anyway, you guys asked me some questions. And I want to get to those questions and answer them since today is Friday. And uh, I don't, some of them are very interesting. Let's go ahead and get started here. So this first question is going to be coming from Spanky Meiji. Now, uh, let me apologize. You guys send, I, I know you have like a, a username that you normally have. And I'm pretty sure that uh, YouTube, for whatever reason, is changing it to another username. So <laughs> you know who you are when I say these names. Other people may not recognize what... Anyway, do you have a good get-home or bug-out bag and what's in there? This is actually um, here where I'm at right now. I, I just have this feeling like... Uh, if things are so bad that I am feeling it necessary to leave from this location, what uh, the, the rest of the place, I can't imagine a place that's uh, worth going to, I guess is what I would say. Now, that in mind, I do have what I'm about to tell you about. I still have that even though I'm back in my home country, the United States. You know, living abroad and being an American, you know, things can happen very suddenly. Things can change. Your uh, popularity as an American might suddenly change. Yeah, well, you won't be popular at all in some of these situations. Whatever it may be, sometimes when you are abroad, you find yourself in the position where you need to leave quickly and suddenly. So I did have something of a get uh, bug out bag or something like that. It wasn't exactly a bug out bag, but it was for that purpose. I, if I need to get out of here suddenly and I don't want to draw attention to myself or as little attention as possible, then I have these things available. Now, that consists of, one, a passport. Obviously, my passport. Now, some people have two passports. You, you might not know this, and I'm not talking about like somebody's got dual citizenship or something like that. No, I mean two U.S. passports. Um, if you are one of those people, and it's legal, it's not like somebody's got a fake passport or something. Some people do for the, another purpose of, you know, like if somebody's trying to steal or rob them, they can toss the fake passport and run away. Don't don't carry fake passports. <laughs> we'll get you in huge trouble. If you're trying to go through, you know, like customs somewhere and they look in your bag and there's like a fake passport, it, it can raise some serious questions. Um, also, just having the two passports, you need to be very careful with that as well. Even though it is legal, there is a way to do it. You don't want to have two passports on your hand, you know, like when you're going through. That will, you know raise a lot of questions in other countries, even when you're coming back to the United States, even though, you know, the border, whatever it is, the uh, customs should probably know that you have the two passports, I would think. They're part of the federal government. But just the same, you have your passport. I would have my social security card and another form of ID, as well as various, ver I guess, various currencies uh, in, in the form of cash on hand for different countries in the uh, the area, as well as U.S. dollars, because, uh, well, if you find yourself in a situation where, well, I don't know, anything can happen. You just have to think, like, okay, what, what can I do if you have to get out of a situation suddenly and I need to, yeah, I, I don't want to draw attention to myself. Cash is probably the best way to go. Um, especially since a government might just shut down your stuff and take your money. You know, you find yourself on the wrong side of a war and uh, you had a bank account in the country that you were living in as an expat and suddenly that money has been taken. You, you better have something on hand to be able to negotiate your way through things. The other one would be, and this is more in my mind, you know, knowing where the various consulates 
and the embassy is, how to get there. Then I would also have an idea of how to get to each of these places without using, you know, in, in a form of transportation that doesn't require identification or something like that, where I can get that. That gets pretty difficult in a place like China, for example, but there are ways of getting around um, if you really had to without drawing too much attention to yourself. Of course, your face is in the computer, so as soon as you're walking on the street, they know where you are. <laughs> I guess wear a mask. I don't know. But um, yeah, know how to get to, a, to those places. Definitely know where the consulate is. Um, and if if that's going to fail, I mean, that that's your usually your last resort. Like, okay, everything's falling apart. It's very unpopular to be an American in this place at this point. Um, I better get to the consulate so I can get evacuated. Otherwise, I'm in serious trouble. Um, if not, then uh, know how to get out of that country by other means. But um, yeah, that was my uh, bug out mag. I guess you could say it consisted of that. Different kinds of currency, identification, and uh, knowledge of how to get to a place uh, discreetly. And yeah, th that, that sort of thing. That was my bug out bag. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't really have need of that here in the United States. But um, out of habit, I mean, I'm, I've still got my stuff. I mean, if I needed to grab it, I know right where it is. I can just grab it all at once and go. But, um, yeah, you don't want to be carrying too much cash. Now, I will I will put that in there. You don't want to have a whole lot of, like, thousands and thousands of dollars of cash because, well, uh, th that might draw attention to you as well. You know, you, you go through customs, they can see and they know, like, if you're going through and you've got, like, a big pile of cash, um, they can probably tell what that is. I don't know. Some people might I, try to disguise it in some way. I don't know. But uh, you're going through there that you're liable to lose it at that point. So be careful about that. Don't travel around with enormous amounts of cash, but have enough so that, you know, if whatever place, if you have to go like, OK, I'm going to go to this country because it's the nearest and easiest to get to where Americans are still, you know, they don't want you to they don't want to imprison you or something or worse. Have that money, have that, or at least U.S. dollars or something, euros, something along those lines. But not, yeah, that 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 was my bug out bag. And here, I guess, like I said, I have, I basically have the same thing. Um, I I can't imagine any reason why I would be running away from my home here in the United States. I am home. I know things are kind of crazy in the country right now, but uh, well, hopefully it doesn't get that crazy. Now I've got a question from Sprodswell forty two. Did they really have that weird hospital they showed online? Now, I'm not sure which hospital it's uh, referring to specifically. I'm assuming this is uh, related to the whole COVID thing that happened while I was living in China. Uh, they did have weird hospitals in China. They built all kinds of makeshift hospitals um, where they were sending people. I, I know there's a lot of criticism of the uh, the Chinese government and all of that. Um, it was a pretty chaotic time. I don't think anybody knew exactly what was going on. Somebody knew exactly what was going on, probably. But um, for the most part, as far as the medical world was considered in China, they were just panicked and doing whatever they could. They had to look like they were doing something. So they built all these makeshift hospitals. And if you had a fever, they'd show up in a van and haul you off. And that was kind of scary because... Uh, I knew about the hospitals and they were hauling people off. I saw several people got hauled off and then I got sick. So I just hid out in the back room until the fever passed because I didn't want to go to the makeshift hospital, the death hospital, which is how everybody was looking at it at the time in China. Like you go there, you're dead. You know, they, they haul you off. You're doomed. That's it. You, nobody's going to be hearing from you again. I don't know how much of that uh, actually turned out to be the case. I know uh, people who have relatives that were in Wuhan and different places, and they tell me, you know, like, there, there was a lot of people dying. But uh, I, uh, I personally don't know anyone who, who died. Of course, we were in a small little village, and they built walls to keep people from getting in. I, I think that the, uh, this, yeah, anyway, yes, those hospitals, that was a real thing, the weird hospitals and stuff. They, they weren't necessarily weird. They were just quickly built uh, in a hurry, in a panic. So they may have uh, taken on a weird appearance, a temporary appearance, before they sank into the mud and crumbled. And now from TH37773, do you ever listen to the No Agenda show? 
Um, I have not, uh, but when you, you mentioned it, I tried to look them up. Uh, I saw several different channels, I, I guess, on YouTube come up. I don't know if this is a YouTube program or if this is something that comes on somewhere else. Um, but I tried to look for it, and I couldn't figure out which one was supposed to be the one. If, if this is something that's really popular, um, there's a lot of stuff that's really popular that I don't know anything about because I was living outside of the United States for quite a while. So if I should know what the No Agenda show is, I'm, I'm sorry. I just uh, I just don't. But it sounds interesting. No Agenda. Huh? If, if you can give some more specific information, I would be curious about uh, this No Agenda show. I would love to hear about that or hear what they have to say. Midwest Prepper. Let's see. <clears throat> Clear my throat here. Maybe get a little bit more... Uh, you know, this uh, this drinking of coffee actually doesn't help your vocal cords. It probably makes things worse, but uh, we're going to get through this. Just uh, bear with me here. This is a, a really interesting question, actually. Given the ever-increasing economic estrangement between USA and China, them selling here and us selling there, American business leaders go there more and more every year. What is the odds of an actual military versus military engagement in the next 20 years? I presume there will be none because there's too much money on the table. And even if Taiwan is invaded, China wants to take it without firing a shot, and we have too much involved, and we would break that treaty. What's your take? This is, an, uh, yeah, this, this is a very interesting question. If we were to go back to when I was living in China, I would say I cannot imagine a scenario where the United States and China actually find themselves in an armed conflict, military to military. Um, my thoughts on that ha have changed because I, I know of the, the desperation that is starting to grow in China. At least that's the, uh, the feeling that I get. Um, I even know, you know, just uh, from family members and that sort of thing, I don't talk about it a lot. But, um, you know, before they had absolutely no desire to come visit me in the United States here. I mean, yeah, they were curious about what things are like here. But uh, as for leaving China or coming to the United States, they had no real interest in doing that. Now, suddenly, everything has changed and they are talking about how they would like to come and visit the United States. So, I don't know. Things are, things are really changing. The, the economic situation in China it's very different than it was just five years ago. Um, I always seem to be late to the party. I always seem to miss things or catch it right at the end. So, you know, China, it experienced this big wave of growth and economic everything. People made fortunes. A lot of foreigners went there and made fortunes. If I had, uh, at the very beginning when I went to China, actually done something, I probably would be rich by now. I, I did all right. Uh, we, we started a little business there toward the end that, uh, well, <laughs> then COVID came along and ended all of that. And uh, nothing has really come back since uh, since the whole COVID thing. It's just not the same. In fact, it's been getting worse and worse because you can imagine if China makes everything for the whole world and the whole world is just not buying because their economies are struggling, what's that going to do to China? And to make matters worse, a lot of these, you know, you mentioned the uh, business leaders going to China and all of that. that. That's actually more of a show in, in my mind. I can't say for certain, certain because I don't actually know these people, but... Um, if you had spent decades building up assets in China and then suddenly the political and world situation is changing and you, you might be concerned like, um, you know, my stuff, these uh, major investments are in this communist country uh, where the government could just change its mind on the, you know, the turn of a dime or whatever, turning on a dime. Drop of a hat, we'll go with that one, and take all of that stuff and say, this is ours now. Your investments don't matter. And, you know, so of course, in, in these uncertain times, it might appear as though like all these business leaders are going over there. Of course they are. They are concerned as these changes are taking place that they might lose all their stuff, they might lose their investment, and they probably don't want that to happen, so they're trying to placate the, uh, the Chinese government, which I'm sure the Chinese government knows exactly what's going on. But they'll take the propaganda wind just the same. Um, the reality of the situation is that uh, they are... Sorry, the phone is buzzing. I will take that call in just a moment. But first, they, uh, 
I'm going to take the call now. Gosh, interruptions. Uh, interruption done. It was my wife. You have, you know, some phone calls you just have to answer, even if you're in the middle of a thought. So where was I? Yes, the uh, the situation is, um, well, it's not good. And I, uh, I don't know, out of desperation, I could see something happening. You know, if uh, somebody feels like they're going to fall, their regime and... Uh, the reason that they're going to have the regime fall is because of, uh, let's say, the United States or something like that. They may take drastic measures that you wouldn't expect. It's like, you know, uh, if you back someone up against the wall or a cornered animal or something. I'm not I'm not saying they're animals, but, I'm, you know, you, you, you have to be careful because they can react in ways that you don't expect. Uh, we like to think that people think rationally, that governments think rationally. But uh, when backed into a corner, they may not. They may just do whatever. Like, okay, all bets are off. That's it. I think that's North Korea's plan. If uh, ever the invasion happened, they just unleash everything all at once. Like, oh, it's the end because they know it would be the end. So they're just going to go with, you know, yeah, anyway. I don't know. I, uh, I used to think there was no way. These days, I'm... Um, I, I just don't know. You know, China always likes to think in uh, very long terms. Now, well, people say that. I'll, I'll say this. If you're doing business with uh, people in China, sometimes that long-term outlook doesn't exist, and they're always focused on the short term. But uh, that's everywhere. But in the case of the Chinese state, yeah, they, they mostly think in very long terms, not uh, like right now what's happening. So, they may look at the uh, the long term and say, okay, our long term goals are being impacted by the United States. In order for us to achieve what we need to achieve, we need to remove them as an obstacle. And so I could see them devising plans, methods to create chaos and, you know, just anything to weaken the United States. And then they would carry out their plans, like invading Taiwan or something like that. You don't think the United States is being weakened right now, do you? You don't think that some plan to create chaos and commotion and corruption in the United States is underway as we speak? Well, yeah. I don't know. I, I look at it and I say, if they're thinking logically, rationally, you know, they there's no way. They would not invade Taiwan because... And, and here's the, the situation with Taiwan. Whether we, we like it or not, a lot of our very important stuff is coming out of Taiwan. And nobody has made any effort to, to change that, at least not publicly. So for now, all of our tech advantages exist in a place that nobody considers to be a real country. I don't know what to say. Uh, what, what are you supposed to say about Taiwan? They have their own government. Um, they are called the Republic of China. They, uh, yeah, but somehow we, we can't say the words, I guess, that that is a country. It's a rogue, whatever. It's, uh, I, I don't know. It, it's such a weird and strange, it, just a strange situation, if you ask me. I, I would think that even uh, for a Chinese person looking at it, it's, uh, how would I, it's like somebody in a cult, right? You on the outside, you can look at it and you can say, look, man, uh, or lady. That that's crazy thinking. What you're doing there, it doesn't make any logical sense. If you just consider this evidence and like, no, no, and you know, they they refuse to even look at it because they've been told by somebody in there, don't even listen to what those people have to say, because your salvation is at stake. I I don't know what they uh, they do with the people in China or how they ignore it. Uh, maybe they don't. Of course they know that Taiwan has another government and all of that. I I don't know how you look at that and you don't you know have questions like. You're telling me it's part of our country, but um, it's not exactly. I, I can't just go there. It's a weird situation, Taiwan. It really is. Um, in Taiwan, they consider their government to be the legitimate government of all of China. The uh, Communist Party, obviously, they consider their government to be the legitimate government of all of China, including Taiwan. And when I say Taiwan considers all of China, I mean Taiwan and all of China. So they have all these rules like, um, obviously, somebody born in the mainland is a Chinese citizen under their rules. But you can't have identification because it has to be issued. It's weird that the, like... Uh, 
the way they've set it up, you have to get your passport in your you know home province from their government. Obviously, the the Republic of China does not have like a local office in, let's say, Zhejiang province or something like that. So it's just, I don't know, the whole thing is so bizarre. Someday I'll make a video talking about all of this crazy stuff, the, the mental gymnastics and all of that that uh, are involved when it comes to Taiwan or the Republic of China. And uh, the mainland and all of this stuff. And I, I don't know. It's I, I feel like if a, a person from China were to really think about it, they'd be like, OK, this is this is ridiculous. Either we take them back and say, OK, now, you know, you're no longer a rogue province or whatever, or recognize that like, hey, this is, <laughs> this is something else. And it has been for like 50 years. Um, I, I don't know what you're supposed to say, because apparently the United States government is even bound by this and can't say anything about it. So I don't know. Would uh, would. Uh, yeah, and, and here's this is where it gets really precarious, too. I, you know, if all of our really, really important tech stuff, important chips and things are being made in Taiwan and Taiwan is supposed to, you know, is like this contested territory. It's a really bizarre thing. What in the world are we doing? Why would we put ourselves at such risk? But uh, we have, and we are. So, yeah, I, I think that we would defend Taiwan, not because the, uh, the, you know, the government that we have right now actually cares about the people in Taiwan, but they probably, at least the people in the military that run all of that are probably quite concerned about the chips and things that go in their stuff. So, yeah, they would probably want to defend Taiwan. And China knows this. They're, they're not going to invade. They'll put on a big show, but the cost of doing that. And, you know, we like to think of, uh, well, China has this big army and they want to take it without a shot. I believe you said that in there. Let me see. Did I read the entire question before I got interrupted uh, with the, don't tell my wife it was an interruption. She'll she'll be really upset if I said that. Not an interruption. A pleasant break. We'll call it a pleasant break. Let's see. Uh, versus military engagement. Uh, oh, yes, I did read the entire question. But um, So my take on that, uh, I, I don't think that they would invade. I don't think that they would be able to take Taiwan without firing a shot because Taiwan... Even though they say it's a another just a province, they have their own military. They have jets. They have ships. They have guns. They have tanks. Well, I mean, we just recently, I guess within the last couple of years, sold them Abrams tanks. They have our main battle tanks, so it's it's not going to be something where they just roll up and take it, you know, without firing a shot. There's going to be a lot of shots fired, and it's not an easy place to get to if you're going to be invading. They, they might be able to land paratroopers onto the island fairly easily. Well, actually, they probably wouldn't. They'd get shot down uh, because, again, they have modern military stuff on the island. I, uh, I, I know that they would look at this and they would know the cost of doing this. Sure, if they wanted to throw everything they had at Taiwan, they might be able to to take it, but um, the place would be destroyed. And I guarantee the United States would not stand for them taking the technology that we have there, and we'd blow it up. We'd blow up the infrastructure to make sure that it didn't fall into the you know the People's Liberation Army hands, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I don't see. I think I'm I'm with you on that. There's a lot of stuff on the internet saying to be scared about an invasion of Taiwan. Sure, the possibility is there, and like I said, you get somebody backed in the corner, they can react in ways you don't expect. But I would hope there are some people that still have rational thinking and would say that's not going to work. Uh, that's not going to work to try and take Taiwan. That that's going to have too big of a cost. But we, you know. And keep in mind, you know, yeah, sure, in, in history, they've done crazy things like that. Like in Korea, they, they lost like a million people uh, fighting against the United States there uh, when we got too close to their border. You would think that a country would be like, we're not going to do something like that. We're not going to just throw our people away. But, uh, well, they did. I, I don't think that they will do that now. Remember, Chairman Mao is not in charge of the country at this point. They have more rational people, I hope, <laughs> that are in charge. I mean, I would think they're rational. The, the People's Liberation Army, you, you think of, like, um, military people, you know, they usually think things out, right? Uh, I hope. I mean, these are people that, that do investments. They build shopping malls and stuff. It's not... Uh, it's not even close to what you think of when you think of a military. It's very, very different. It's, um, but, you know, they're, they're going to think about that. Does that answer anything at all? 
It's such a convoluted thing. I think I could devote an entire video just talking about that subject and why I don't think that they would invade Taiwan. But uh, at the same time, I feel like we can't be complacent because you know, out of desperation, they might do anything. You know, who knows what they would do? They uh, they could be making moves right now. I know they're always uh, and, and then Taiwan could even just be a distraction. Like we'll keep them focused on Taiwan when really our our real plan is something else. Who knows? I, I hope that our military people know, but um, obviously I don't. I didn't go to West Point. I don't know anything about this stuff. I'm just some guy that that travels around a lot. But um, anyway, that's my take, I guess. So those are your questions. I have answered them. I would encourage you, if you have any questions for me whatsoever about uh, where I've been, what I've done, what I do, not what I've, not bad stuff that I've done. Although if you ask the question, I'm you know not so fearful of answering any questions to the best that I can. I, I haven't done any bad things. I'm I'm pretty boring. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm not, uh, I, there was some guy that used to come on here that thought I was a spy or something like, I'm not a spy. I'm not that interesting. I shouldn't have said that. Now people are going to, now I'm, uh, maybe I should say, I am, no, I'm not. I don't want to get in trouble again like that. That can get you in so much trouble. You have no idea when you're, you're doing international travel. If uh, some country decides, even a friendly one, you know, you're going to like uh, a place you think is friendly. And they decide that you're, you know, involved in espionage or something. You could find yourself in some serious trouble. That bug out bag might come in handy at that point. Um, yeah, make sure that the consulate and the embassy know where you are. And anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end it. Ask me anything. Ask below this video. Leave your comments. And, uh, well, I'll answer your questions in an upcoming video, probably next Friday. Anyway, I'm going to get back to my Friday. And, uh put this video together, which should be easy. I'm, I'm dragging this out. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.